The winning feeling in an All-Ireland semi-final made even better by the fact that it means that Scotland will be playing in the field of dreams that is Croke Park on All-Ireland final day on September 27th. Yeah, totally surreal, just unbelievable. It's good to have me folks down as well, they drove down this morning, so yeah, good bit of support, so hopefully I'll have more at Croke Park. Yeah, what sort of day will that be for you? I mean, have you ever played there before? No, I haven't. Played big matches and all before, and we played like All Ireland final with the club in Scotland before, and Jordanstown and America and all. But like, yeah, it's totally everybody wants to play in Croke Park, and it's a bit of a dream to get there. But yeah, definitely looking forward to it. So you played for all those teams all over the world and at home, and now you're going there with Scotland. What does that mean? It feels funny even to say that we're playing for Scotland. So yeah. Um, it's good to be away from home and play Gaelic because like, we're all so close, we feel really close, like, we're almost like a family over there. Um, but yeah, it's good to actually play a big game with Scotland, all the Scotland girls, definitely, yeah. I suppose as someone that came over to Scotland five years ago, never had played football before. I'm a more camogie head from Antrim, so therefore football was never really bred into me. Uh, so to come this far and come with Scotland, never mind my own club back home, which would obviously be camogie, uh, and to be playing in Croke Park, something that you just dream of as a young child, and at that, unbelievable, unbelievable, fantastic, yeah. Proud both for the players and, I suppose, <laughs> the family that come along, just a proud day. That's some smile you got. That's a Crow, <laughs> that's a Crow Park smile. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just brilliant. We can't believe it. So, great achievement for everyone, and like that to bring the teams kind of from Scotland together, Aberdeen, um, Glasgow, and ourselves, and just to be able to go forward and put a team forward and now to be in the final. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. Scotland's opposition were Derry, who came to the Fingalians club in Dublin full of hope and with plenty of enthusiasm and young talent. This was Derry's best performance in years, and they had big moments, like when they scored an early goal. But Scotland survived the storm and a shaky start to come good after the break. Yeah, I think the second half, definitely the first half, we had to come out and prove ourselves. I think the first half was a bit of a... A bit of a slow start, I don't think. I, I don't know, I think after playing Louth, um, although we were a bit more settled maybe coming in to play Derry, um, I think we thought we might have been hit a bit harder. I know after, after the first half you wouldn't have thought that, but I think coming into the second half we knew we had to pick the game up. Um, we were getting there and then they nearly scored the goal, which could have been a bit of a different end, but thankfully I think got the heads down, got the confidence up, got the cheering going. I think the second half was completely different from the first, so thankfully uh, we got the scores on the board and ended up the right way. The key score for Scotland was a goal made by the midfielders, Captain Rosanna Heaney, number eight, and Karen Feeney from Donegal. Make no mistake, ladies football in Scotland is on the up. Well, as our club, like we're getting moved forward now, we're playing the intermediate and we've the British semi final coming up for it now on the 19th of September. Um, so we've got a good Scotland community going, but we hadn't really trained together before. Some of our team names we didn't even know. Um, so it's very hard. Scotland's very obviously wide and Aberdeen's furthest point away. So it's four and a half hour journey they have to make to down to make a training session. So it's totally different to doing something like county at home. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's good. It's all worth it in the day, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Totally. When the whistle went, I actually looked at the scoreboard to see that we definitely won and totally unbelievable, yeah. Very good feeling. And Croke Park? Tell me how many times you've played there. Never. That's the thing. I'm like, this is just amazing. Yeah, it's great. I think for a lot of the girls, it'll be just, yeah, a surreal moment. Um, great achievement. We've just got to make the most of it on the day. So we're just next three weeks. We'll work hard and see what happens three weeks' time. Yeah. So... What will it be like now with the family, the club at home in Cushendall, everybody getting ready to see you in Crow Park? I think a big one. Um, I'm not too sure there's probably one too many footballers in Cushendall, two not too many that probably play for a county team, and three not too many that get to cross the line of a Crow Pitch Park, never mind as a, as a hurler or a camogie or but as a footballer. So uh, nice for a bit of diversity uh, amongst Cushendall, the small 
village that it is. That'll rock the people in Cushendal. <laughs> you know, you're going there as a footballer to Crow Park. Uh, definitely, yeah. I haven't been there as a Camogie or Plate County, but never, uh, never any further. So. Do you think this will put Scotland GA and ladies football in Scotland on the map more? Yeah, I think it has to. I suppose kind of in the UK. Um, down in London has been developing over the years and they've been doing well so I think Scotland now are kind of getting their foot in the door and showing that they've got a bit of ability too so making a bit of a difference so it's good yeah it's great